Hi everyone, welcome again to Handy Dandy Husband. I have my hot cup of tea today and I have a real need for some really delicious and moist carrot cake. Today we have another food find video for you, but this one is a little bit different. I have looked and tried many commercially made carrot cakes throughout Metro Vancouver. Sadly, nothing comes close in texture, moistness, and gentle silky sweetness than the carrot cake I make at home. Now, I wish I could say this is a recipe handed down from generation to generation for many, many eons. However, it is sadly not. I found this recipe in 2004 on the side of a buttermilk container and have used it since. Here's a picture of that same recipe from 2004. It is called the Blue Ribbon Carrot Cake and it is the best carrot cake I have tasted in Vancouver. Stay tuned and I will show you how I make it as well as how I make the buttermilk glaze that goes on top or if you're into the cream cheese icing, how I make that. As always, a PDF of the exact recipe is available in the description below. It's completely free. Feel free to download it as many times as you want and surprise your family and guests with this delectable, exquisite, moist carrot cake. The Blue Ribbon Carrot Cake. Best in Vancouver. Let's begin. What you'll need for this recipe are two cups of all-purpose flour that's been sifted, one cup of crushed and drained pineapples, one cup of chopped walnuts, two cups of grated carrots, three-quarter cup of vegetable oil, and I use olive oil but you could easily substitute just regular vegetable oil, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon, two cups of white sugar, you could substitute some brown sugar as well but uh, I'm just uh, going with the plain old recipe and that's two cups of regular granulated sugar, two teaspoons of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, three quarter cup of buttermilk and either three eggs or the three egg equivalent. Now I used Bob's Red Mill egg replacer and this is what that would look like. Okay, let's go on to the next step of mixing the wet and the dry ingredients. Now, we have the KitchenAid mixer here and we're using the large paddle. And what you would first do is just preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. And while it's preheating, you can start mixing the wet ingredients. So we're just going to begin here. First, we're going to mix the three egg substitute. Looks like there's a lot of tapioca flour in here because it's quite slinky. And then the olive oil. to get all the bits in there and then the buttermilk and then finally the sugar okay, I'm just gonna do a quick mix here before I turn the mixer on. So now we're going to use the paddle mixer with the mixer, lock it in place and just mix to blend. This should just be oh, level yeah. 4 and uh, you would do it for a few minutes until it's completely blended. Alright, the um, wet ingredients have been blended and now I'm just going to mix them 
mix all the dry ingredients into the flour. Once I quickly do that, then I can put them all in together into the wet ingredients. So now it's been mixed completely. And now I'm going to add a little bit and then start the mixer. Okay, so we're mixing it in gradually so it doesn't result in a big puff of flour. I'm just gonna get the edges cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so now this has been blended. All right, now I'm adding in the uh, pineapple, carrots, and the walnuts, which of course are optional but they really add a nice crunch to the carrot cake. All right, so now that I've blended all the ingredients together and they're nicely incorporated, I'm going to now Use a spatula and put it into a greased pan. So I've just removed the paddle and just getting all the sticky pit bits off of it. Now we'll just pour it in place. Combined all the ingredients into the pan. This is a 9 by 13 pan that's been pre-greased. And as you can tell, it's not completely even, so what I'm just going to do is jiggle it a little. And that will be even, and it will rise evenly after this. And now, once the oven is, has reached the preset temperature, uh, we'll be placing it into the oven for 55 minutes. And during this 55 minutes, we can either make the buttermilk glaze or the cream cheese icing. So what we have done here is just mix the sugar buttermilk and butter with vanilla extract in a small pan which we will be heating up. This will create the buttermilk glaze. Now <clears throat> I've gone with half portions of each ingredient because I find that uh, in combination with the cream cheese icing that I make uh, this half portion is better uh, than having a full portion but uh, you can obviously do the full portion if that's all your all the glaze that you'll be using. So I brought all the ingredients for the buttermilk glaze to a boil and then I let it simmer for about five minutes to help evaporate some of the excess moisture. And now what I'm going to do is place it onto the um, cake, uh, which I have already sliced into pieces so that the buttermilk glaze can seep into the crevices between each piece. First I begin by putting the glaze in between the areas that I've already cut the pieces into. Okay, after I've done that, just going to put it all around the edges. And then finally, just a, t a teaspoon on each slice. You'll find that it might slide off, but that's okay. What does stay on to the very top of each cake will actually absorb into each slice. Ok, 
Okay, and uh, we're almost done here. And as you can see, there's a thin layer of buttercream glaze on top of the cake. Makes it glisten and this makes it extremely moist. And just to quickly show you how to make uh, cream cheese icing, uh, I have 250 grams of uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, the original, and this is just one bar of it. We have two cups of icing sugar, we have half a cup of butter that's been softened, room temperature, and finally just one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. This uh, icing sugar has been sifted to provide more of a smooth and airy texture. But, uh, now what I've done is uh, just quickly put into the uh, mixer uh, softened cream cheese and softened butter. And as you know, handy dandy, we want to save money and the environment, so we're going to make maximum use by scraping the wrapping with a silicone spatula. There we go. There we go. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, lock it in position. I'm just going to bend it, blend it out a, lot, a little faster. And when you're doing it a little faster, uh, basically it doesn't clump into the center of the mixing contraption. Okay, now we're just gonna check on it. Okay, and now, We'll be putting in a little bit of the icing sugar, a little bit at a time, and continuing to blend it. I'm going to start off a little slow. about there now. All right, and now before I place uh, the mixer back down, I'm just gonna put in a teaspoon of vanilla. There we go. This will be just on medium. You can tell the dark vanilla is gradually mixing in with the yellowish, whitish, custard colored uh, cream cheese icing. All right, I've turned it off, unlocked it, and this is done. You can tell it's got a really silky, Texture. I'm just gonna put everything into the center. All right, so what I'm doing now is just putting uh, the uh, cream cheese icing into a container, and I'll uh, link a uh, video card into this video showing how to make one of these containers of your own. They're free. And the purpose for putting it into one of these containers is that uh, we find that by placing it into a container and putting it in the fridge, the cream cheese icing tends to set and gets a little bit harder and easier to apply onto the cake itself. So I'll just do that off camera. Now, here is the carrot cake after it has been cooled and the buttercream glaze has been applied to both. On this piece, I have just placed a buttercream glaze and this is great if you're looking for something light, not too heavy and with just enough sweetness to really go well with tea or coffee. On this piece, I have added the cream cheese icing on 
five sides. Now note, I love having the cream cheese on all five sides. This is simply heavenly and it goes excellent with black coffee. But you have your choice, whichever you prefer. Now some may just place the cream cheese icing on the top, but that's a matter of preference. Now if we go into the layers, just going to turn this up here. What you can see, let's see if I can get that better focused for you. What you can see is that the top is glazed with the buttermilk glaze and this is the mixed batter. You can see a little bit of carrots and a little bit of the pineapple and I think some bits of walnuts are also visible there. Of course, cream cheese icing doesn't show very well, but let's break it open and you can see the inside there. Let's bring it up a little closer. And again, you have your cream cheese topping. You can see bits of carrot and oh, there you go. You can see a large piece of crushed pineapple there. Uh, you can see just make out a little bit of the of the walnuts. I think that's there. And of course, uh, you can see obviously the carrots. Now let's taste it. Now of course there is my own bias because I've made this cake, but. I assure you, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. Let's dig in. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh, this is very moist, very nice. I begin with the, um, just the moistness. When you put it into your mouth, it's not overwhelmingly sweet, but there's a flavor that just continues to grow and grow. A little bit of cinnamon, and as you're chewing it, you can feel the texture of the carrots and the uh, pineapple and the walnuts coming straight through. Bit of a crunch, but not too much. It's just simply delectable. Very, very delicious. Mmm. Okay, so let's try going with cream cheese icing now. Wow, this is delicious. Now I only have tea here, but this would go really well with black coffee. Oh, just amazing. Mmm. Oh my God. Oops, goodness, goodness. Just delicious. I really wish a uh, bakery or restaurant would make the same recipe. Because it, while it's not a lot of work, it is some work. And it would be so much easier just to be able to purchase it from a restaurant. Mmm. This is just incredibly good. I hope you like this video and I hope you do try the recipe and let me know how it works out for you in the comments below. If your family or guests like the carrot cake, please give me a like as well. Don't forget to download a free copy of the recipe from the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time at Handy Dandy Husband.
Thank you.